Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Film Buds podcast. This is our 24th bonus show, and my name is Henry. Just me this time around, but that's no problem. This time, I'm going to be talking about Band of Brothers, the pretty legendary HBO miniseries from 2001 about World War II. And it's always been one of my favorite shows really of all time, and I've been wanting to talk about it in one form or the other for a while now, and I figured, you know, why not talk about this as well as the Pacific, the follow-up series, or spin-off series, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, well, thank you so much for joining us, and whether you got it on the Bandcamp page, thank you very much for donating, and or if you got it on the regular feed once it's come out, thank you for that. You know, we, and we, we hope you will subscribe, follow the show, rate us, tell your friends, so do all that stuff if you haven't yet. But yeah, well, um, Band of Brothers, I guess just the background with me. So ever since I was a kid, a kid, uh, I, I'm in the military now, but ever since I was a kid, I have loved military history, especially World War II history. That's one of my favorite things to, to learn about is World War II history, really all facets of it. And I think probably in middle school is when I heard about this series, I would have been, you know, a little, um, I would have been, and that was really when I was just starting to get interested in World War II history. And so it was kind of perfect timing for when the show had, you know, around the show, around the time the show had come out. And I was like, I'm sure essentially everyone who watches it just absolutely loved it from the moment it started. And it's, I think it's still one of the best shows, or I mean, it is a mini series, I, uh, technically, but I think it's one of the best shows of all time. And we'll, we'll get into the details of it, and I'll talk about my favorite episodes, my least favorite episode if I had to choose one, and you know we'll get into um, a lot of good stuff about it. So hopefully it'll you know be a good good time for you. So I guess kind of kicking things off, let's just do a little plot synopsis here as usual. So as I said, Band of Brothers came out in 2001, and the synopsis is the story of Easy Company of the U.S. Army 101st Airborne Division and their mission in World War II Europe. From Operation Overlord to VJ Day. And it stars huge cast. Damian Lewis, Scott Grimes, Ron Livingston, Shane Taylor, Donnie Wahlberg, Peter Hills, Matthew Leach, Dexter Fletcher, Doug Allen, and many, many others. And when the show came out, it won both the Emmy and Golden Globe Awards for Best Miniseries. And it has definitely had a huge influence on war movies since and on miniseries just as a whole, I think. And I feel like it's, I don't know if HBO's even top this, at least not when it comes to historical shows or, or war, war stories. I, I don't know if any, any show has topped this really since. I've seen this show many times. I probably want, watch it about once a year, something like that, because it, it just never gets old. It feels obviously, you know, it is a dramatization, but I feel like it probably feels as real as it possibly could for, a, you know, a Hollywood HBO dramatic series. So it it feels as grounded as I think it could be. Um, it feels incredibly real, gritty, grimy, very grounded. And there's so much to unpack. There's so many interesting characters that come in and out. Damien Lewis, you know, in the lead role is awesome. I've, I've always loved Damien Lewis, and this is a fantastic role. Ron Livingston, who's, you know, gone on to do a lot of other things as well. He's fantastic, and it really everybody is. And I just love how each episode will generally focus on someone else as the lead, you know, and there'll be the recurring characters, but there's always usually a focus for each episode on a certain character, which is really interesting. Um, You know, this, this cup, you know, starts when they parachute into Normandy on D-Day and then, you know, takes us all the way through where they discover concentration camps um, deeper into Europe. And then when victory happens and the war, war is over. So, it is a true story, you know, is it all real people. And I don't know exactly what things were, you know, changed slightly or, 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 or taken out or not put in. I, I'm not sure. But for what it is, it's pretty amazing. It's the action sequences are so intense, gritty, bloody, but very powerful and impactful. There's a lot of wonderful quiet moments and a lot of funny moments too. like all the humor, I think really works. It doesn't feel forced in it feels all of the humor feels very genuine. And the score is great. Yeah, uh, and I guess I do want to just go ahead and start talking about certain episodes. So I figured, you know, as I did with The Young Pope, I want to talk about at least my top three favorite episodes. And then if I had to pick a a, a least favorite, I'll do that one as well. So 
right off the bat, uh, I so I actually started with episode two when I first saw this. I went only went and saw the first episode way after I'd finished it because I realized I thought that was the first episode, episode two. But you know, I was wrong. One of the best episodes is episode two, which is Day of Days, which is as I was just saying, it starts with them parachuting into Normandy and having you know multiple companies, you know, the entire force who've parachuted in being completely scattered. It's pitch black. They don't know where they are. They don't know where their friends are, their teammates are. You know, every every company is getting mixed up and not sure where to go, who's who to follow. And it's just, you know, it was a complete geographical and information cluster, you know, because nobody knew exactly what, what to do, where to meet up, you know. So, but for the show itself, it's very interesting because it's, you know, you get this kind of smorgasbord of different companies mi- mixing together and trying to figure out what to do. I mean, in episode one is where you get really introdu- introduced to, you know, the majority of the characters, but it, it's really where you get to know them close up. But I think even the the scenes where they're on the, the planes and they're getting ready to jump and some planes are hit and they don't even get to jump or they're engulfed in flames or they get shrapnel sent in or and then some are able to jump out, some aren't. All that stuff is, is very harrowing and, you know, intense. And then when they're on the ground and they're like, Two people at a time, five people at a time, ten people at a time, you know, just trying to figure out how to move forward. And, you know, Damian Lewis, who is this, you know, one of the the commanders or the the leaders of this company, he is always that grounding force. He's always very calm. He's very understanding. He doesn't freak out. He just feels like such a true, genuine person. And some of that's writing, some of that's his performance, but that's one of my all-time favorite characters. I just love watching his progression as a character throughout the series. And, you know, there is a ton of action in this across the whole series. And I think all of it feels very different. Like, I don't think I ever really got tired of the action, which can happen, especially in a in a war series, a war movie. It's very easy for action to feel just the same thing over and over again or just become tiresome. Uh, but this one, I feel like it never does. It's always intense and it's always, you know, on on the edge of your seat, but I'm never really tired of it. So that's a a big point in its favor. Then another one, which is the following episode, episode three, which is Carentan. This might be my all-time favorite. It it is very hard to choose because I don't think there's a bad episode and so many of them are just amazing. I'd say really all of them are amazing, but this is the one where they storm the city of Carentan in France and it's this town, you know, urban warfare siege, which I think is it's fan- like the moment it starts, you're just like, holy crap, we're in this, you know, it, you know, the handheld ca- uh, cinematography, just the, the the chaos of it, of them trying to maneuver room to room, building to building, street to street, all that stuff just feels so as as realistic as I feel like it could be again. You know, it, it works. You definitely feel that it is rare that you see like urban warfare done like this. And I think that's why it stands out so much. But that's a fantastic sequence. And then after they've taken the, the town and they're waiting to move on to the next objective and you get some great quiet moments with the characters and stories and all that good stuff. And then towards the end of the, the episode is when you have that tank battle or where they're, they're attacked by tanks. And this is this episode follows Blythe, who is this kind of spacey, odd character, but he's a pretty fascinating one at the same time. And he tries to find his courage towards the end of the series, but sadly he's shot by a sniper at the very end, uh, very tragically. But that's a fantastic episode, has a great progression. I feel like I, I don't want to sound like too much like a broken record, but it's like, I feel like there's aren't, there aren't moments where I'm like, this sucks. So this is lame or this d- just isn't working. It's always, I've seen it countless times and every time it's great. It never gets old. And there's so much heart to it. That's what I love. It doesn't feel exploitative or it feels like the people behind this, which, you know, some like Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks, you know, that's a pretty good pair to have behind a series like this. And you feel that heart, you feel that weight to all the stories, the, the, the battles, the characters. And so, yeah, it's, that's a fantastic episode. So I might do another one just for the heck of it because each one is so interesting. But if I was doing a, a top three, the other one I would pick for a favorite would be Bastone. Episode six, which follows the medic of the group. This actor is so good. Like he is, there's something about his look, his just stare that is incredible. Like it's, it tells you so much that by this point in the war, the, the company is just worn down 
you know, to a pulp. And especially someone like him who's a medic who's just having to see the worst of the worst of, of everything. And he's just having to jump out in front of fire and, and deal with injuries and all of that. And just you can see that wear on his face. And he, but he, it is Shane Taylor who plays Doc and then Damian Lewis are my two favorite performances. But I think right when this starts, because it's all in the snow, it's, you know, you know, winter time in Europe and it's freezing cold during the Battle of the Bulge and that jet black hair he has and this really pale, exhausted face like he, he barely even has to say anything and i feel like you just you feel for him completely and, and you know how he feels as best you can but his journey throughout the episode where he befriends befriends this nurse and him trying to go back and forth from bastone to get supplies all that stuff is very just so tragic because you see how what awful conditions there are um both in the city and then also out in the arden forest you can feel that cold you know, and you can just see how freezing everyone is because they didn't have the right rations, the right equipment, the right cold weather gear, anything like that. And so it's just horrible. But his performance, his character is awesome. Uh, probably, I guess I would say would be my favorite of even more so than Damian Lewis. And, you know, it ends where Easy Company is surrounded. But as they did, they did not surrender. They, you know, fought and fought and fought until relief came. And sadly, the nurse that he, that, Doc befriends is killed in a uh on a bombing raid. So yeah, it's it's a very sad episode. Very, very sad. And really I feel like as the series gets goes on, it gets sadder and sadder because you see how tired they all are, how worn out they are by war, the conditions, the equipment, the the combat, all that stuff. And so this is definitely one of the most heartbreaking in a lot of ways, but it's still a very fascinating and compelling one. So definitely a favorite. Another one uh, it's, I, I don't know if I want to call this a favorite episode because it sounds odd considering the subject matter, but a very strong, powerful one, let's say, is Why We Fight, which is episode nine, which is where they encounter the concentration camps. So, you know, this was a obviously a shock to most of the world when this happened and all these young, you know, 18, 20 something year old soldiers who are discovering these horrific concentration camps and what the Nazis have done and just having to like deal with what is going on and all the horrible, you know, inhumane conditions and all these people who are just flooding from these camps who are, you know, on the verge of death, you know, just that shock. And this episode deals with that very well because they just kind of stumbled upon it one day and then suddenly they're in this whole mess. But that's an incredibly powerful episode and it just reminds you of, as the, the title suggests, why we fight. So yeah, it, it's a, it's not one I really like to revisit very often, but it's a very important one, obviously. And it's, of course, a, a, a essential part of the series and of the story. So I'm glad they did spend as much time on it as they did because it's very important for everyone to see. So, all right, well, I mean, least favorite episode, if I had to pick one, would be episode one, Kurhi, which is really, I feel like since I did see the, fir- the second episode first, I feel like I almost didn't even need that first episode. I feel like I got to know everyone immediately very well. And it's just, it is maybe a little too long for what's there, but it's still it's still a well done episode. It's I understand the point of it. It's just I feel like having seen the whole series, I kind of want to skip episode one because I don't know if it really gives me a whole lot after having seen it the one time. So yeah, it's still a good episode. If you're watching it for the first time, yeah, start with episode one, of course. But if I had had to pick one, episode one again. This this series is just I can't say enough about it. It's amazing. It's groundbreaking i would say it's has an age today um and should be something that really everyone should see even if you just watch like an episode of just to kind of understand it because it's a it's a very important story and a very you know a lot of courage and a lot of tragedy as well keep an eye out for i'm going to be doing the pacific next for our next bonus show so keep an eye out for that but this one is my favorite of the two it feels the most new and fresh considering that you know the pacific came after that even though it's still that, that's still a very good show as well but this one i feel like i'll never never lose interest in it never not want to rewatch it never not want to tell people about it because it's yeah one of hbo's all-time best projects and as well as steven spielberg's and tom hanks you know who were the behind the scenes and please you know on letterbox f- follow me on letterbox follow film buds on social media at film buds Please let me know what you think of this series in whatever fashion, social media, or on Letterboxd. I'd love to hear your thoughts, what your favorite episodes are, 
what you don't like, what you do like, do like, if it's overrated, underrated, that kind of thing. Um, so please, you know, flood us with comments and all that stuff will be in the show notes. Please make sure to, to do that. Check out our, our other bonus shows. Make, keep an eye out for the Pacific coming soon because that's another series that I feel like I have a ton to I, I have a lot to say about and I've been wanting to, to talk about for a long time. So make sure to uh, check that out one as well. Tell your friends about Film Buds, all that good stuff. We really hope you enjoy it and get something out of it. Thank you for those who have donated either for this show or for other bonus shows. Please do because that helps to go support the upkeep of the show. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah, well, as always, I hope you enjoyed it even half as much as I did. And see you next time.